All right. Hey again, everybody. I'm Ashley Adamson. So glad you have found the Pac-12 Perspective podcast. And today we're bringing you a conversation with one of my favorite people. She's one of the brightest and most accomplished student athletes I've ever had the pleasure to cover. Uh, the Oregon State basketball star, two-time academic All-American, Michaela Pivik is our guest. And Mick, I guess technically I have to introduce you as a former Oregon State basketball star, which is kind of just Super hurts weird. my heart a little yeah. bit to say. But either way, it's great to see you. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for having me. It's definitely weird saying I'm an alumni now. Um, one more class still this summer, but it's a weird feeling. And she's myself as a former Beaver. Yeah, well, I want to ask you about that. So first things first, you're, you're living in Boise, Idaho right now? Yep, living in Boise, Idaho, right across the street from the Smurf Turf, uh, Boise State University campus. Okay, so you mentioned that you've got one more class until you finish your mm -hmm. master's. You're, you, I, I should remind everyone in case they, they don't know. Uh, you're getting your master's in biochemistry and biophysics. You have a cumulative GPA of 3.93. I know you didn't get to actually celebrate graduation in terms mm -hmm. of walking across the stage at Research Stadium, and I know you've got one class left, but what, what did you celebrate this past weekend? Because uh, you basically have graduated. I know you got one more class, but what is it like to feel like you're right on the precipice of being an alum? It's, it's a really cool feeling. Uh, it's a time of reflection on you coming in as a freshman, my freshman year, moving into T-Bowl Hall with my fellow uh, Beaver classmates, Janessa, Kat, and Maddie, um, and thinking of all the memories, good and bad, throughout the years, and thinking about this is your, probably one of your last classes um, at Oregon State. Uh, so it's, it's a weird feeling in terms of uh, almost closing the chapter on that time there, um, and also looking forward to what's next. So let's, before we talk about what's next, I want to talk about this last chapter of your college career, because obviously it wasn't the ending that you wanted. Uh, and I think yeah. about all of the things that you accomplished in your time in Corvallis, the program's all-time leading rebounder as a guard, no less. You're one of 20 Pac-12 players to get 1,500 points and 1,000 rebounds. All, all of those stats are impressive, but you also had so many big moments as a bead. Is there a moment or memory that now that you've stepped back and, and can kind of reflect on your career that, that stands out as, as one of your favorites? Uh, I think I have top two. Um, both revolve around uh, accomplishments with our team. I think my freshman year, uh, we were picked fifth in the Pac-12 preseason rankings um, that ended up becoming regular season champions. Said we senior year, Colby Orm senior year, Bree Brown and Gabby Hansen. So that class, um, finishing out on top like that and coming in as a freshman and being able to experience that joy and that passion. Um, and then also my sophomore year, um, we beat Baylor to advance the lead eight. Baylor had some kind of absurd win streak um, during that year. And then we were the underdogs ranked sixth um, as an NCAA tournament seed, had beat Tennessee at their home court. Um, they were 57-0 prior to that. And then we were, they were 57-1 after our game. So those kind of two milestones, the accomplishments of our team will stand with me forever. I remember both of those well. And, and Mick, you were one of the first people I thought about when I saw the news come down in March that the NCAA tournament was going to be canceled. I, I can't imagine how actually devastating that was for you personally. As you, I mean, you guys were getting ready to host the first two rounds at Gill. Can you take me back to where you were and, and who you heard from when you found out that, that your season and your career essentially as a beeb was over? Yeah, uh, so actually I was coming from class during that day and I had heard that the men's tournament had just been canceled, the Pac-12 men's tournament in Vegas. And I was like, uh-oh, that's not a good sign. Um, and then we were going to weights as normal that day, had weights with our strength and condition coach, Jeff Macy, hashtag Jeff. Um, and we had just finished weights at 1.30 and everybody looked at their phones and we had found out that the tournament had been canceled uh, and you're just shell-shocked at first. You're like, wait, can they postpone it? Is it going to happen in a later date? When are we going to get our chance? Um, and then as like a week or two went by, you just thought it's, it's not going to happen. Um, so right after we found out that information, um, didn't have practice, we went straight up to the film room um, and talked about what we wanted to do as a group. Um, and so we had a game of kickball, went across the street and got Dutch Bros. Um, and so it was just a really good time with, I'm going to get called to delete that, sorry. Um, but really good time with our team um, and just kind of one little moment together. Yeah, I guess nothing too big that kickball and Dutch bros can't fix, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how, how did you, though, seriously, how did you, how did you process that? Because it, it was the, it's supposed mm -hmm. to be the culmination of four years of, of just an incredible career and hard work. And there you guys were right, you were right there. Yeah, um, it was really hard for me to process. I'm 
not going to sugarcoat it at all. I'm usually like one to really look on the positive side of things, but it was tough. Um, I, something that helped was I wrote a diary entry um, before the Oregon, Oregon Live um, talking about like my experiences, my thoughts through that. But um, definitely that senior year is, it's more than just those four years at college. It's like your whole, because um, all these collegiate athletes, they've worked since they were like maybe elementary school, middle school, high school for the opportunity to play. And it's like your senior year is the pinnacle moment of that. So it was, it was really tough to uh, think about like, that was my last opportunity um, with that group of girls and trying to have that be your last collegiate memory is tough. Um, but thankfully I get the opportunity to continue to play basketball. Um, and so, but I feel for all the seniors that don't and that's their last basketball memory, that last collegiate memory just um, is not the way you'd like to go out. But, you know, um, everybody's adapting during this time and it'll grow, grow, grow our resilience. And this, this class will be uh, definitely a memorable one. Yeah. And the good news for you that you mentioned is that you do have more basketball left to play. Two months ago, you Mm -hmm. were drafted by the Atlanta dream. Can you just tell me what that moment was like for you? Yeah, it was, it was a childhood dream. I was um, in Boise, Idaho at a friend's house. My parents were able to come due to the COVID situation, um, but they were able to zoom in. So they were like to my left on the little computer screen. Um, And our TV was a little bit delayed. And so I saw um, right before it happened. I saw my mom kind of crying a little bit and I was like, uh oh, what? Is everything okay, mom? And then the next moment I saw my name uh, pop up on the screen. So it was a cool moment with my family uh, virtually and my sister right by my side um, to kind of celebrate that together. Yeah. What went through your mind? Uh, just super grateful and thankful for the opportunity, relieved that a, a team um, uh, thought about me in that way and was happy for me to be joining their organization. So obviously, Nick, because of the pandemic, you didn't get to go to training camp and, and compete for a roster spot. So can you just kind of update mm-hmm. us on where everything stands right now? Yeah, so I'm not going to play I'm on the inactive roster right now. I have an opportunity to go um, next year in training camp, 2021. Um, I'm definitely going to play basketball in the future, just not right now. Um, currently, I'm planning to play in Spain um, starting like late September, assuming the whole world opens up a little bit more and, and allows for that. Um, so that's like my first concrete plan going forward. That's exciting. So can you tell us what, what team what uh, team jersey am I going to have to get in Spain? Uh, it's called Campus Proete. Uh, it's in Lagrano, Spain, uh, about an hour from Bilbao, which was right by the water. Um, so it's a, it's a cool city. I'm super excited about the opportunity. Um, have to brush up on my Spanish skills a little bit, but I'm um, excited for it. Uh, well, that's exciting. Hope it all goes according to plan. It would be awesome to have that experience over there for a year. I did just see the WNBA announce that it is going to have a 22 game season, and and then the regular playoff format. All those games will be played in Florida at IMG mm-hmm. Academy, which means that we will get to see at least another Oregon State fan favorite and your former teammate Sid Weiss. <laughs> who I think it's her birthday today. Mm-hmm. If I'm not mistaken. Yep. Happy birthday, Sid. Okay. Yeah. Happy birthday, Sid. Mm-hmm. She's been making a name for herself just a few years into the league. She just signed an extension with the LA Sparks. But what advice has she given you or what has your relationship been like um, since she left Corvallis? Yeah, uh, we've been in contact ever since she left, left Corvallis. She's been a big role model, role model for me. Um, this past season, she came back from Spain during her um, season there uh, to renew her visa and she also made a quick stop in uh, Corvallis to check up on us Um, and so she is one person who really takes the time to um, invest in relationships with people around her um, and has made a big impact on me Um, and so she's given me advice just to be yourself and really be a sponge and learn from everybody around you.